there's a story that's not being told, the story of Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. The world has condemned it as the occupied West Bank. Could it be the biblical and historical heartland of Israel? Hear the miraculous stories of true pioneers who have dedicated their lives to the restoration of this land. Discover what's being hidden by mainstream news and media. Experience extraordinary places that few people even know exist. Join us for the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Joseph's tomb, a place of, uh, you definitely can experience and see the heat of the battle when you uh, take a look at Joseph's tomb, because this is definitely a place that is a stronghold by the uh, by the Arab occupiers of the heartland of Israel. So uh, we're going to take you guys in there tonight. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, but right now, we're going to an overlook so you can kind of see just where we will be going. Pretty cool stuff. This is the big picture. We want to show you where we're going to be going tonight at 1 o'clock in the morning under the escort of the Israeli army. You know, tonight is going to be the most out of the box episode because not many people go into an area A in Israel in the middle of the night with a military escort. But we are with like 15 other buses. You know, it's almost redundant to say this place is significant because there's nowhere in Israel that you can go that it's not significant. But in reality, this is where Jacob came um, when he was settling the land with his family here. And actually just below me is what they call Jacob's Field. It's one of the four places in Israel that biblically they actually bought and paid money for a piece of land. They actually have the deed. This is what they would call Area A, which means that they don't allow Jewish people to come into these places. And it's actually against Israeli law. So. I mean, we could go into talking about apartheid. Yeah, it is true, but it's opposite what most people say. But about once a month, they arrange uh, an escort with the Israeli military to take busloads of Jewish people in to visit and pray at Joseph's tomb. And it just so happens that we're privileged to jump on a bus at 12.45 tonight, like midnight, just after midnight, and go into this town in the middle of the night with a military escort. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be pretty exciting. quarter to one right now. The bus is pulling up in the morning and we're about to jump on and head for a very special place. But we got a special guest with us today, Aaron Lipton. He's going to be helping uh, guide us down there. So it's, exci it's exciting. Did you go to sleep at all? No, no, no. no. Too excited. They say that there is some uh, balagan. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? So uh, that's why there is a delay. So Where was all those buses? Um, I don't know. 2 30. We're leaving at 2 30. That's in another 45 minutes. Anyways, we're sitting down here at the bottom of Bar Bracha, the Mount of Blessing, because are we the second group that's going? Is that why we're waiting? Yeah. That's Basically, the there's like. <clears throat> something like 15 or 17 bus loads. So multiply that times 50 people each that are going into Joseph's tomb and they're taking the first group in right now. So we're waiting for them to come back so we can go in with the military with the second group of buses. So yeah. it's fun. We're um, out in Shum Road at one o'clock in the morning. There are three places that it is said that belong to the Israelite people that belong to the Jewish people. They are Arab uh, Temple Mount, the Machpelah Cave, and Joseph's Tomb. 
These are uh, three places that were bought with money by uh, different biblical figures. Abraham, the Machpelah cave, Jacob bought uh, uh, the Chelkat uh, Sadeh, which is the field which is east of the city of Shechem, uh, from Shechem, from Chamor, the son of Shechem. And David bought a uh, Temple Mount from the Jebusite. So these are the three places that, that, that our sages say that the, the Gentiles cannot say are not ours, that, that uh, we, we took them in by force. These are ours. And unfortunately, when you look at them today, none of them are ours, okay? They're all under control of others. Maybe the Machpelah cave is a bit, you know, under our control, but they're not completely un un under our control. Um, and that's, that's kind of, uh, of sad. Uh, so whenever, whenever I go, and this is my personal, my personal feelings, whenever I go to the Machpelah cave, whenever I go to Joseph's tomb, um, it's my way of getting closer to who Joseph was, what he believed in, what he did, what he went through. And, um, and this, is what I, this is what I connect to when I go to Joseph's tomb. We are, we just saw our queue. Bus is ready to move in. So we're all jumping back on the bus, getting ready to head to Joseph's tomb. So wow guys, we are entering into the stronghold of Shechem right now. This is like uh, beyond words to really describe this. What's, what's special about this place to the Jewish people here? Well, first of all, it's a place that you rarely go to. Yeah. You very rarely have uh, opportunities to come and visit this amazing place. The place where one of the patriarchs is buried, Joseph. It's like right in the heart of the... Of the, of the city of Nablus today, but it's, it's really it's Shechem. This is the biblical city of Shechem, but yet the the Muslims hold such a massive hold on this city. It's absolutely crazy. So like Jewish people, due to their safety and uh, several other reasons, they're not allowed to come into this area except under escort through the military. And so like right now, like I'm feeling this strength because it's like to think that I have the privilege of coming here to this place and like merit Oh, we've got, we got, look at this. This is where they've had all their fun. Well, what's inspiring? Joseph, I think, summarizes the, the story of the Jewish people. Joseph is, is the going out to exile, going to Egypt, but Joseph is also the, the coming back to the land. You know, making the Israelites swear that they will bury him not in the land of Egypt, but at home in the land of Israel. And, and Joseph actually makes the circle complete. Right now we're walking down with five buses, which means it's like 250 people, something like that. But this is half the size of the first group that went in, right? Yeah. You know, last time we, we like played music and everything. Really? Yeah. Like we brought our instrument. This room inside is where the tomb is, the tomb okay. of Joseph. Okay. Um, and so everybody wants to be as close as possible okay. and to pray to God uh, and, and hope that uh, by 
being near the tomb of the righteous, their prayer will be will, will be will get to heaven. Will go will get to God with the help of the righteous. So, what is the significance like for you coming here? There are a number of reasons. First of all, just like I would like to go and visit the tomb of my grandfather uh, or my grand grandfather. This is a place that I feel close to because Joseph is one of my patriarchs, is one of the people that established the Jewish faith, my, one of my forefathers. Uh, so so that's, this is, first and foremost, he's my family member, and that's why I feel so close to him. Aaron Lipkin here with us today on the tour. It's been really amazing. They're starting to push everybody out, but we want to take a couple minutes to talk about the significance of this place and the, and the power of what it holds right here in the heartland. Aaron, what would you tell people around the world as to what, how, how should they stand with Israel and especially regards to like right here? Well, people are saying that that they're trying to blur the connection between the people of Israel and the land of Israel. Uh, and especially in Judea and Samaria, which really represent the biblical heartland where all the biblical stories happen. And people are, are, are trying to blur that all over the world. And our mission, both Jews and Christians, everybody who believes in the Bible, is to make that bond clear to stop the blurring and to show the, 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 the amazing miracle, not just of the connection between the Jewish people and the land, but also the prophecy, the biblical prophecy that is fulfilling uh, the, the return of the exile. The, the, this is the biggest miracle, I think, that, that we can talk about, the, the return of the, of the exile. Like Jeremiah says in, in, in his book, people will stop say, talking about the exodus as being the miracle. And we'll talk about how God brought all the Israelites from exile, from the, the countries of the north, back to the land. That is going to be the big miracle. And we are living that big miracle now, today. Right now, Jeremiah is talking about now. That's amazing. 